You wanted to see more comparison videos here with Thomas and Autogefühl? Here it is. BMW iX versus BMW X5 and also the question electric or petrol. The powerful versions here, the X550 versus the M50i. These are the comparable power versions with that V8 under the hood. And of course, this electric performance. This will be so interesting, I can promise you. Let's go directly with the exterior. With the iX here, with this mono kitten here, I would say. High and wide, then here, not with the split and it has this automatically repairing function that when you have slight scratches, it repairs itself in harsh sunlight or with a hairdryer. This is no joke indeed. And then horizontally put lamps in the front. You can also get the BMW laser light. You can see it here with the blue accentuations and the strong lower part here as well, but the more closed look and a little bit lower for the overall experience. And here the X5, you can see a more traditional kidney here, double kidney in the front with the M50i. You also have everything you can get, actually get here with the shadow line, everything blacked out, so a more sinister look. Tanzanite blue is the color here, a nice and very elegant dark blue color. These here are also the laser lights, it's an option you can also equip it with here, and the more traditional daytime running light. Strong accentuations here in that M performance version in the lower part. So if you take one more comparing look here, the X5 here more traditional styling and I would say I do prefer that especially because I so much more like that double kidney whereas I'm not such a fan of that mono kidney. The iX does look more unique and people look at oh wow what is that? It catches more attention definitely but just on the styling wise in the front, it's the X5 for me. What about you? Let's continue. Hey, that's a cool comparison shot here, is it? <laughs> in the side profile. The iX, 4 meters 95 or 195 inches. The X5, almost the same length, 194 inches or 4 meters 92. And yeah, you know, these two and a half, three centimeters or an inch is a difference also in the wheelbase. Wheelbase slightly longer here in the iX, but not really a big difference. The X5, you can see, has the more upright building form. We have 21 inch wheels, comparable 21 inch here for both vehicles, here the X5. And definitely here the more classic conservative setup. I really like the X5 styling. It is bold, it is more angular actually. And when we move over to the X, sorry, iX, <laughs> yeah, I guess X, 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 X. <laughs> Here we also have 21 inch wheels, so we can really compare the driving comfort definitely. And also here you can see then, it's just flatter, as flat as an X6 rather. And a rather sleek line here. And it's just more stretch and a little bit less angular overall. But definitely in length and wheelbase, both are very comparable. As for suspension, for both, you can either get the normal adaptive suspension or opt it up with the air suspension. Since it's the M50i with the X5, we have the normal adaptive suspension there in here with the air suspension. But they both come very close, these BMW suspension. I can already tell you so far more details than soon in the driving part. This will be super interesting. Here at the rear, I still also prefer the X5 in a way because of the more traditional styling. Nice tail lamp design here with the LED as well. And I also prefer the X5 if we compare it to the X6 because this SUV Coupe style is yeah, sometimes doubtful as well design. Let's take it that way. Here in the lower part, AFAP alert, auto food fake exhaust police, because the outer tip is, you know, just for beauty reasons, then the rear ones on the inside with that V8 here. However, the iX from the rear design, I think it's also beautifully done here with that very slim stretch. So that's to me actually pretty cool as well. As for the top speed, the iX here in the X Drive 50 version is at 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles an hour. You can go as fast as the X5, that is then 250 kilometers an hour or 155 miles an hour if you go for the M60 version of the iX that is also available. Top speed wise, these would be then more comparable, you know, but power output wise and acceleration wise, these here are more comparable then. It's very interesting. And also 
price-wise, I can already tell you so far, the X5 as a base X5 starts lower at the price. But here, if you pick then the comparable power output versions, they exactly cost the same money and they're both around one or 20,000 euros or dollars. That's very interesting, isn't it? Four liter V8 for the BMW X5 M50i. Woo! And the acceleration figure here is 4.3 seconds, two mile kilometers or 62 miles an hour, where it is 4.6 seconds with a closed hood for the BMW iX X Drive 50. You cannot open the hood, there is no frunk underneath. Yeah, that's the thing. This one here, the iX, would be quicker than the acceleration when you again go for the M60 version. And the X5 would be a little bit slower than this one here when you go for the 40i version for the six cylinder. Remember, the six cylinder petrol engine will be way more fuel saving than this eight cylinder here. So it is, let's say, a more clever choice. And to me, it also fits a little bit more to the vehicle. However, the V8 has, of course, even a greater sound, which will also be a major difference in driving when we compare the petrol and the electric one. As for the range, very interesting. When this one is here fueled up fully, you can score some 700 kilometers easily, you know, some 450 miles. However, even more range just with the six cylinder. Here with the iX, you can score something as high as 400 miles or 650 kilometers in best conditions, ideal summertime. More realistic is 500 kilometers or 300 miles. And in winter time or with high autobahn speed, then it drops a little bit, you know, less below. And of course, fueling it up, this one here, 35 minutes, 10 to 80% state of charge, and at a, you know, very good fast charger. And here, well, two minutes at the fuel station. Now to the interiors, and also have different key fobs. This is the optional, let's say, computer key. Of course, you can also get a more simple one for the X5, and this is the one for the X, uh, iX. I always mistake it. Is this? Yeah, it's getting complicated. <laughs> now the interiors here. This is the more classic conservative layout, two times 12.3 inch screens. Also with a lot of real buttons here, single button for everything at the steering wheel, single button for the heated steering wheel, for example. So let's say more simplified, BMW OS 7 as well. And then there's this new, very futuristic lounge interior for the iX and with more hashtag capacitive BS. And here this one curved screen layout, 12.3 inch on the left side, 14.9 on the right side, but it looks like it would be one screen. However, we've seen with the X7 facelift that the X5 probably will also soon get this layout with the BMW OS 8 operation system and also this one screen curved layout. And then also the climate unit will change here at the X5, it's still manual at this point when we record the video with the soon coming X5 facelift. It will also then be that the climate unit is in the screen. Let's take a detailed look. But I want to know from you, which basic layout would you prefer? This more futuristic lounge layout here with the iX or the more classic BMW layout with the X5? Tell me in the comments. Now we're getting inside the X5 here with a classic door handle and awesome door closing sound i love that that's what i prefer actually and then getting inside so here this rather classic layout good and comfortable seating position these seats here by the way at the moment the animal skin equipment but they're also available in sensor tech in different colors and you want to go animal free that's also what i would recommend steering wheel up and down in and out electric way and it has this more round shape this however the m steering wheel where you have a thicker grip here in the top part and with 189 or six foot two still leaves a lot of headroom there is a panoramic roof available not with this very vehicle at this moment but this one has the alcantara ceiling yeah more than a thousand or euros or dollars or more than a thousand euros more than a thousand euros or dollars <laughs> extra price here for the Alcantara ceiling very expensive but pretty beautiful
And now we come to a moment, you know these situations that someone tells you something and then you see something totally differently and you can't get it out of your head anymore. So this is a spoiler or warning that this moment will come right now because take a look at these seats. What do you see? What form or what kind of body position does it remind you of? You know, here with the upper area and the head restraints, no matter which of the seats. To me, I looked at that and I totally saw immediately here, like, like someone would, you know, <laughs> like, you know, doesn't it totally look like this? <laughs> like when someone pulls the shoulders up? Sorry, now you will always see it. <laughs> and here we're over here with the X5 with a more classic setup here. I think a nice integration of the screens here. By the way, pretty cool, the carbon fiber inserts but they cost more than a thousand euros or thousand dollars extra. But at least then you have less high gloss piano lacquer for that. When we start the engine, by the way, we can see this one here still has the climate unit like this. And you also hear some of the V8. I do prefer as it is right here. Yeah, I'm just afraid that it does lose it. And it, we can expect that it does lose it like the X7. Then the AC unit also goes into that one here with the, with the face fan and so on. So, I prefer the more conservative user interface. Uh, I, I can say it that way. Here in the lower part, by the way, you can slide this one open, then you have inductive charging pad. You can use it also for this computer key, then it does charge. Adaptive cup holders here. To me, they are also a little bit better than in the iX. And then, yes, a real shifting lever. This one here for the sports shifting mode, pretty cool. And the control lever here, with a classic setup you can control it while driving for example to me that's the better solution now let's take a quick look at the screens at this moment bmw os7 and i think that's the easiest solution look at that on the left side you have all the menus you need possibly and everything has a good overview and i don't really need much more you have this home screen um, but usually i just use the one on the left side and car can be accessed directly here to me that's all i need and then the Apple CarPlay hotkey right here is a good integration like this. And this one is equipped with the optional Harman Kardon sound system, which has a great, very true 3D surround sound. Yeah, I just love that. And the digital instruments, you cannot change too much in there. Here, right side, the RPMs, left side, the speed. Head up display, nothing special, but always nice to have. Rear seating here of the X5. You can see the classic setup. Not too much of space, although it's a long car, you can already see that. Inside, how's the seating position and headroom and so on. So it is sufficient here in like room, no problem. And here also headroom, no problem. It's yeah, actually very comfortable. You can easily house four adults. It doesn't have a too high middle tunnel here, so it's actually also okay here with five tall adults, a little bit stiff on the middle seat, but that works. So overall, I'm quite happy here with the rear area. Of course, when you look from here to the front, it's not as impressive as the iX, just from the visuals from the inside. These rather hidden door handles for the iX and frameless doors. And that leads also to yeah, a very bad door closing sound. That's the catch of it. So inside of the doors, this is an, in this case animal skin. Uh, however, you can also get it with Sensitec leatherette. Same for the seats. This is an animal skin seat, but they are Sensitec seats. They are very beautiful, also available in black and beige, for example, we had them, and also in brown. So there are enough animal free choices. Definitely this different lounge interior setup. Getting in, it's a little bit lower that whole vehicle and headroom is also plenty no problem at all and there's also a panoramic roof available for this one the difference is this panoramic roof when you would have one is closed always you cannot open it you can just dim it the other one in the x5 you can also open it and yeah it is definitely a different seating position you sit overall lower not this super high command driving position but the visual effect of is of course more yeah you know evoking more impressive interior overview here for the iX super impressive definitely with that yeah unique steering wheel setup it looks cool to handle not sure not really an advantage but you get along somewhat I would say very clean definitely right here 
and with the latest BMW OS8. Then you have this flying middle console here, right here. This crystalline um, turning lever, by the way. <laughs> well, you can also get it in the normal base version, then you have high gloss piano, like that. that's the disadvantage. But this one can be blinding when there's some sun rays in there. Here with the matte wood, of course, that is really cool and very clean setup here once again. When you select the driving modes here, that's more complicated because you have to select it here and then have to press it in the screen or select it there and then select it with the turning jog here and then it stays like this and when you want to go back to the GPS, you have to hit the GPS button. So that's to me a little bit too complicated and this is the theme here of that vehicle. Also here with the climate control inside here, yes, we know that will be expected for the X5. To me, they have made the user interface more complicated. That's the downside of the vehicle, although it looks really awesome. Oh, look at these little clouds, nice visualization. So it is quick here, so they have enough processing power, definitely. Here on the left side, you miss the car menu, and that is to me really hit and miss. So I want to have these car features, but then I have this all apps view and there's apps all over the place. It's just too much. You can limit it to vehicle apps, but then where do I find what? I have no idea and I don't want to, you know, have such a mess in the infotainment system. Or what about you? So I think maybe taking it a step back, the OS 7 was just easier to use. This is the CarPlay integration or Android Auto also possible for the iX, just wireless. And here we have the Harman Kardon sound system. And I think it's once again a great sound. Comparable definitely, maybe the resonance room here is even a little bit better in the iX. Hey, yeah, uh, maybe it's a little bit more awesome the sound even. You know, there's also um, the Bowersman Wilkin system available, which is even more expensive 4D. I think the Harman Kardon system is absolutely fine. Then the digital instruments, you have the startup sounds, iconic sounds by Hans Zimmer. Uh, mm. Are they really necessary? Not sure. These here, you cannot turn them off. You can just turn off the sounds of the driving experience. That can be turned off, but not the startup sound. Here you can also change the contents and also the whole layout of the thing. So you're a little bit more flexible with these instruments. Overall, hmm. Yeah, I think they have become more complicated once again. By these you can adjust it then how you like it. And the iX also features a head-up display. If you have some GPS guidance, you will even see more of that there. In the rear, they are using this EV platform, no middle tunnel whatsoever. Let's see about the legroom and headroom result. Right here, yeah, this is a little bit more legroom even. Um, yeah, really using this platform as well, so that's actually quite cool. But this is actually, you know, the thing we have, a little bit more in wheelbase, a little bit more uh, there, like this, you know, couple of centimeters. So that's actually well done. Headroom-wise, also no problem at all. And it's also comfortable, so it is definitely comparable as for the rear experience. Here you feel a little bit more spacious, especially when you move to the middle seat. So driving with five toy adults is seating-wise more comfortable. Just the back part here is to me a little bit um, harder, so that's the difference. You can get along in the rear with both vehicles. Both have a very comfortable result. Of course here, you know, more cozy open space experience. Now the trunk comparison, they open quite differently. Here the iX, one hatch, and the X5 has this split hatch. And the cool thing is, it has some more character, I think, because you can have this picnic function in here of that lower area and just enjoy yourself or each other. <laughs> so I think it's a cool solution, definitely. I, I mean, maybe it's not always the most practical thing, but I just find it cool, you know. What about the figures? 500 liters here, 100 liters more than in the iX for the X5. A meter in length, easily a meter or 40 inches in width, a little bit more even. And now the height that is interesting is about yeah, more than 80 centimeters or 32 inches. This is a difference then, overall very well usable. Let's move over, 400 liters, 100 liters less for the iX. And what is actually the difference? So we have here the length, with a little bit more than a meter, so a little bit more. 
width also easily a little bit more than a meter or 40 inches but now the height that is more limited more at 75 centimeters or less yeah about like 29 inches so you lose a little bit of height so it's a little bit more narrow there and then you have a different angle here and that's why you also lose these leader figures Welcome to Thomas's Comparison Driving Lounge, starting with the BMW X5 in the M50i with the 4.4 liter V8. Great performance. Sports mode, that we also have some quick shifting. Well, and let's also put it to the sports shifting mode here, putting the shifting lever to the left side. And we'll let one more car pass. Uh, one more. Just, just for safety precautions, because we will be very, very quick. From 40 kilometers an hour, let's go. Two hundred, one twenty-five miles an hour. Wow, <laughs> that sound. Woo! And we go further. And this is also a difference here with the combustion engine. We can go 250 kilometers an hour. This is the top speed right now. Whoa, impressive, super impressive indeed. And how calm and stable this vehicle remains also at higher speeds. Not sure why this light truck is here on the left lane. Here also with the adaptive BMW suspension. Wow, that lane change. We have a huge SUV. But there's no problem in lane changing and it stays so upright and calm and collected. That is just awesome. And that's also a thing about air suspension versus the normal BMW adaptive suspension. In the X5, you can get that adaptive suspension, the adaptive M suspension, with the sportier tune here in the M50i version, or the adaptive air suspension. And usually the air suspension is always better as for the comfort, not necessarily as for replacing it cost-wise when it gets broken and sometimes, then of course an air suspension is more expensive if you hold the car for a long, long time. But here, the adaptive BMW suspension is so good actually that it's keeping the, it says keeping, keeping the lane, please Thomas. <laughs> so the adaptive suspension is so good actually that at some point with the X5 and the X7, I say, you can easily go for the adaptive suspension and you don't need an air suspension. So this here, the big BMW adaptive suspension here in the X3, X5 and so on, BMW 5 series is one of my favorite adaptive suspensions overall. And it is indeed so good, so, so well combining sportiness and comfort that you do not miss an air suspension. So here it's absolutely fine not to big the air suspension. It's incredible how sporty the car is, although it's so big and heavy, and at the same time great comfort, although we have huge wheels mounted there, that is an extraordinary achievement indeed. And of course you can also go for an air suspension, but to me it doesn't bring you a big comfort plus here in the X5 and the X7. Again, not because the air suspension wouldn't be any good, just because the normal adaptive suspension is so great. And here in the M trim, it is combined with the stiffer node. You have the sport here right and especially here at higher speeds. But still, it's not that you would say, oh, I can't take this as a primary comfort car for everyday driving life or something. This is totally fine then still. So. Um, yeah, this is the thing about the X5 in general. It has had such great handling and to me, driving-wise, my favorite full-size SUVs are really the BMW X5 or the X6 if you prefer that coupe line and then the Audi Q8 or Q7 also depending, you know, if you want that coupe line or not. Um, between the Q7 and the Q8, I feel there's a bigger difference than between the X than between X5 and X6. Yeah. I'm leaning more towards either Q8 or the X5 somehow, um, because the X5 has this you know more practical trunk. 
the Q8 doesn't lose much practicability and don't need the space of the Q7, so that would be, you know, my pick then in this case, the SQ5 petrol or here the X5 with the six cylinder because here the eight cylinder it does quite go quite high in the consumption figures at least 11 liters on one kilometers if you really use it more like 14 liters on one kilometers so you either minimum um, some 20 mpg us 25 mpg uk or more realistic less than 20 mpg us the more like 16 17 mpg us and barely 20 mpg uk that's a realistic consumption figure and there of course the ix is way more efficient if you want to go same high speeds by the way you have to go for the m60 version with the ix but here today we picked the 50 version that's why the manufacturers do that with these strange numbers nowadays that you can indeed also power wise compare the electric versions and the combustion engine versions and these are the ones actually power wise comparable and in general well how is the felt difference of course soon we'll drive the ix and we, we can tell you more about that but i've driven the ix in so many different versions so far and the thing is both feel kind of heavy at the same time they really very well combine sportiness and comfort you do feel that the ix has a lower center of gravity that helps in sportier driving and also feels more settled on the road just in very tight corners where you're hard on the brakes and the vehicle is being pushed outwards the ix does have some added weight yeah but then again the center of gravity is lower mm. so i'm really looking forward soon you know we'll do one more auto one acceleration i'll also already put it in the sport shifting mode so then the gears are turned up later we will have some winding no that truck will not go in front of me again <laughs> so um, later on we will have small tight winding corners and this will be very interesting so and there's a bully behind me now although i'm driving the speed that is allowed but now i say goodbye <laughs> yes, I could be a German Bond villain, definitely, definitely. I'm free to do that, you know, for any directors watching. <laughs> ah, more than 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour, and it feels so sporty. No overtaking a BMW Z4, and we're saying like, what the hell, I'm supposed to have the sports car? No, I have the sports car, you at the moment, <laughs> it feels like that. Wow, amazing sporty performance feels so great and noise insulation wise awesome i mean over 200 kilometers an hour more than 125 miles an hour feels like nothing it almost feels like standing still it's not too loud in here the car feels so smooth this is a great piece of engineering indeed and yeah hello mr bond welcome to my realm you will now die from the sharks in the pond. <laughs> okay. So far as for the Bond villain thing, again, my application is standing. Now we're heading into some countryside roads. And also the, oh, this is so great. I mean, I'm just having so much fun. Yeah, the traffic is still green. Now 90 degree corner. Oh, awesomeness. Wow. This was, by the way, a stop sign indicator. Of course, at this point, the stop sign was irre irrelevant because there was the green traffic light. If you wonder in Germany, a stop sign and green traffic light means that if the traffic light at some point would fail or if it's maybe turned off in nighttime, then the stop sign counts. But as long as, tra as uh, there's a traffic light, all this traffic light is counting. Wow. Cruise control. You can set it here on this assisted driving mode as well. And then let's see, yeah, assisted driving. And then we can also, uh, yeah, here we go. And there's the green steering symbol. And let's see how smooth that is. See here, no hectic steering movement, but rather very, very smooth. That works well. Yeah, assistance systems wise, let's see that corner. Yeah, look at that, even in that rather tight corner, it's meant to do autobahn 
assisted driving, you know, but even here it was doing that very, very well. So the thing is I'm getting along so well with that vehicle here. I know the operation system, 7.0 system, and it's to me a little bit simpler than in the iX. However, we have to remember that the X5 will get that <laughs> we'll get that update here that we know from the X7 face it, it will be the same and then also infotainment and screens wise there won't be a big difference anymore between iX and X5 depending on if you watch this review at a later stage or if you watch it when it's you know really really fresh or maybe you think about getting a used one or so I'm a little bit more confident with the more traditional conservative design also when I have here the climate unit to control manually Again, this will change at some point then. But the big question is really then X5 or iX. And at this point, you know, when we start driving with the X5, it's really hard to pick any other SUV to that. Um, as I said, I really like the Q8. It's also so much fun in driving. That would be definitely a harsh, you know, a hard, hard pick or a hard thing to do really. Yeah, by the way, yeah, going back to normal shifting, but we also go to comfort mode. We have a more balanced setting. Gears are not turned that high than here in the comfort shifting mode and also normal comfort mode. The suspension is a little bit more forgiving and so on, so uh, rather smooth ride. Mm. I mean, size-wise, X5 and iX are somewhat similar, definitely. The wheelbase also doesn't differ that much. I told you earlier, just a couple of centimeters, the iX has more in wheelbase. So they have some similarities. You do feel that the X5 is higher here on the inside and also on the outside. Remember that the iX has the length of an X5, the height of an X6 and the wheels of an X7. So the X5 feels more traditional SUV definitely. Actually the iX more feels a little bit than the X6 I would say in a way. Uh, although, although it doesn't really have that coupe shape, um, yeah, yeah, it's really, really, really tough to say. But um, you definitely have a more traditional conservative layout here with the X5. Um, I would say, especially when you're used to so far BMWs, of course, you get along a little bit better. I feel also that the steering wheel is better to handle the iX steering wheel is more freakish as it's very very how could you say not even modern design it's more like um, experimental design with the iX and this to me handles a little bit better definitely uh, from the overview the X5 is also better as for this more you know upright uh, form from the windows and so on and um, hmm. I mean, we soon reach now these winding corners part. This will be a very, very important test, maybe even the important test. Not that everyone would do winding corners with these cars all the time, but there we can find out more about the individual characteristics. But I can already tell you so far, after driving both, yeah, the choice is getting harder and harder and harder. What will I do? But first of all, let's hit the corners. One more time to the sports mode and to the sports shifting mode. Yeah, that V8 does make a difference sound-wise, so if you ask yourself, is it better with the V8 sound than with the electric boost sound? Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Nice. We have also the rear exit steering here that helps when parking in and out, but also getting out of the corners. Let's see and remember also how much it pushes to the outside of the corners. For such a heavy SUV, hardly. And nice acceleration out. Rear axle bias, of course, or rear bias for that all wheel drive. It drives so extremely well. Yeah, I can just underpin that. And of course, the V8 sound is great. Still, for efficiency reasons, in this case, I would still go for the six-cylinder in the X5 and yeah, like the 40i and 
this will also be absolutely fine power wise definitely but now the question is how does the ix relate to this here and now to the bmw ix sport mode and i also go from 40 kilometers an hour to the german autobahn let's go Plop, 200 km an hour, 125 miles an hour. That's also the top speed in here for the X-Drive 50 version. Faster, also 250 km an hour, would also go with the M60 version. And here also at high speeds, good noise insulation, very stable on the, low, on the road, low center of gravity, nice lane changing. You feel that the car is a little bit lower and the center of gravity is lower, that's also helpful. As for wind noise, the thing is, yeah, also great result overall um, because you don't have the engine sound you might subjectively think it's louder especially here from that area and also when you have some cars passing by but it is also a super super silent ride it is really tough to say which one is exactly more silent both are very silent I feel just that the difference that the you know subjective note that maybe the X5 would be more silent. I think it rather comes from that the engine in the X5 covers some of the smaller wind noise that would come, you know, some from here like this, a car passes by and you hear that a little bit more prominently when there's no engine running. So that's, I think, the, the main difference. Yeah, I'm getting off of the motorway now here. The thing is really, the user interface in the X5 is to me definitely better, less complicated than this one here. Sadly, as I said, the X5 will get the same updates and then will be like in the X7 or, you know, similar or comparable to this one here. So user interface wise, I would rather say get the X5 now, <laughs> that you still have the, uh, like this, this easier user interface, you know, that would to me be the cooler thing, definitely. And what a silent yet sporty and performance experience. Energy consumption wise, you can score here in summertime great results with the iX. Some 17 kilometers on one kilo 17 kilowatt hours on one kilometers or 27 kilowatt hours on 100 miles. And that would rather mean a range of 650 kilometers or 400 miles. A more realistic figure if you have some more, um, let's say, you know, a little bit more performance driving, more higher speed autobahn, you can still easy score 500 kilometers or 300 miles just in very, very cold winter time um, that might drop down, you know. So, uh, and even high speed driving, we once tested that we can drive this one here at 200 kilometers an hour for 200 kilometers, so 125 miles an hour for 125 miles yeah that's it so if you compare to the eight cylinder then actually the range difference in summertime it's not that big with the eight cylinder we had about like seven half kilometers of range here then 650 maximum but the more it goes on motorway and the higher the speed is and the colder the temperatures are or the lower the temperatures are more range differences there and of course if you compare the six cylinder in the bmw x5 then you still have a significant range difference especially in winter times but range wise here because they stepped up the game here at bmw i think the result is when you think about ev versus petrol it's not really about the range it is and recharging is also good you know with the 35 minutes 10 to 80 percent state of charge here the question is how is your charging infrastructure at home, at work, underway? How is it on your travel routes? How is it on your regular drives every day? And how is your infrastructure where you usually charge or where you usually can charge? And also, you know, from like sustainability, environmental aspect, definitely when you pick the X5, get the six cylinder. That is from the combustion engine point, the best choice and you can easily go electric to me i think really it's all about the infrastructure that's to me the most crucial point because driving experience in the electric vehicle is awesome 
yes, the sound is somewhat missing. And I mean, in these, uh, you know, in these driving modes here, um, and because you also have uh, this, you know, this, this enhanced sound, if, if you want it uh, that way, um, it is somewhat interesting, definitely. Um, you can also activate or deactivate it. But here again, you see how complicated it is. Like, where is that now, you know? So I have seen it before, but then again, you search for such a long time. Where is that now, you know? So, uh, and for some, for some things, even if you have seen them already, you think like, where is that now, you know? And I don't know. So I can't find it instantly now, and that's really the thing. Is it live vehicle? I, I have no idea. So, and then you don't find things, and then you say whatever you want to say, yeah, whatever, you know. So here in the sports mode, once again, when we start at 100 kilometers an hour, let's accelerate. And 200 once again, it, it starts slowing down a little bit earlier. And here, great handling at high speeds. It's a lot of fun as well. Oh, now hard on the brakes. Yeah, that happens also that they overtake even though they don't have enough speed. So once again on the gas, such great acceleration. And here now, this is a typical situation. Here's now we are finished at 200 kilometers an hour. And now I could use a little bit more speed to overtake this one. Yeah, but I mean, that's totally a German thing to say or to do. Now, once again, hard on the brakes. And here, of course, when we were at high speeds, we can gain back the energy, whereas that's not possible with the combustion engine. As for recuperation, either normal D mode, rolling, and then adaptive recuperation. That means when the car is in front of us, then there's recuperation happening. When there's no one in front of us, the car is just rolling. Or put the shift lever to the back, B mode, and then I lift the foot off the throttle, and we have harsh recuperation. That is in more the one pedal driving feeling. And which one is more suitable to you? Find out and also find out together with your passengers. Because when you drive one pedal driving, then you have to be very gentle with the throttle both ways, pressing it and also releasing it, that you don't put extra G-forces then on your passenger. The steering form is more likable in the more classic conservative layout, I feel. So it looks fancy here. It's not bad to control at all. The steering feel is also good. I think just a classic round setup or let's say a, a, a setup with a just flat bottom but then this asymmetric form, again, you get used to it and it's pretty nice, definitely. But the more classic setup is to me a little bit better, user interface wise as well. However, here, due to this open setup, you have an increased traveling feeling, but you sit lower in the X5. You have more of this command driving position where here you have more or less a crossover driving position just in relation to the X5. In relation to other vehicles, this is still the pure SUV feeling, definitely. Uh, but now in a direct comparison, you feel a little bit higher in the X5, definitely. So that would maybe also be a thing to consider. Which one is giving you more emotions? Yeah, I mean, the combustion engine sound, it's not only the sound, but also the vibrations. These low frequency sounds and vibrations that somehow give you a satisfying feeling. And that is missing with the electric vehicles. And I wonder, why can't they do that here? I mean, they do have the sound design, so why can't it be possible to introduce a low frequency sound? Why do they all have to sound like spaceships, you know? Yes, we got it. You want to be modern and you want to be futuristic and stuff. But can't you give the choice, you know? Why are you ordering Hans Zimmer and giving him millions for designing... <laughs> what is this for, you know? So why wouldn't you just pick, let the customer pick, hey, today I want the six cylinder, today I want the eight cylinder sound, today I want Star Trek spaceship sound, today I want 
okay, whatever, Hans Zimmer's song, whatever. But, you know, let the customer pick, and then we can maybe also have that combustion engine experience without having fumes at the back. That would be something, wouldn't it? Now it will be very interesting to... Gesture control. Now it will be very interesting to see how does this one perform in these fast winding corners. All right, one more time, sports mode, and let's see the IX here in these winding corners. Wow, that, oh, that instant EV acceleration from the get-go is impressive and definitely harsher, sportier than in the X5, acceleration-wise. Out of the corners, also very well out of it, very nice. However, I feel it pushes you a little bit more into the corner then. Wow, that rear axis steering is awesome. So accelerating out and how smooth the acceleration is, that is amazing. It does apply more G-forces on your body, so the experience, I would say, is more extreme in the iX and also how linear then this power output is when you get out of the corner. That is actually even better and sportier. I would say the X5 has in a way the more emotional experience because of the sound. It also feels more natural, more connected to you, whereas the iX is the more extreme experience in the sporty agility sense and more feels like in a computer game, you know, because the power is so enormous, especially from the get-go. So, yeah, I would say the iX then, from the figures, from the performance, actually more impressive, especially in the lower speed areas. But the X5 delivers a more natural experience. Because you have no shifting here and the power is immediately there, this one here is in a way more seamless, you know, without any transitions and so on. <sighs> but just if you think about the fun way, mm, ah, this is so tough, you know, here lower center of gravity and a little bit more weight. Both are so great to ride. Um, so head-wise, you might think, yeah, that does in a way make more sense with the iX. But how the G-forces are applied and how everything comes together as an experience for sport and fun driving, for agile driving, just, you know, from a gut feeling, I would still go with the X5. Not necessarily with the M50i and the V8. I said it earlier, I would be totally fine with the six-cylinder. This is a more natural choice for the X5, I think. So just by the driving experience, both are awesome, definitely. But from, from the gut feeling, I would still go with the X5 um, than with the, you know, like a, like a 40i. And I can't really explain why, or I can't like, you know, yeah, maybe something with the sound and so on, but that the G-Force may maybe a little bit less extreme, that might be something, but it's really a gut decision. You know, Thomas B is already waiting for me. Now we carry on with our comparison test here and what is my final verdict for today? Well, which one will I take home now and which one would you take home? Tell me in the comments. As for me, both are very impressive, great driving experience with both vehicles. It's amazing how agile and how sporty they can be, although the weight and the size is so enormous. That's the key to both of these vehicles, definitely. Exterior-wise, a clear winner for me, it is the X5. Interior-wise, from the looks, the, just the visuals, the iX wins it because it's so impressive, this lounge interior. User interface, however, the X5 is my winner on the interior so far, as long as they didn't facelift it the same way they do from the X7. And we can expect, if you watch this video at a later stage, probably we only get the X5 facelift or you have to buy the X5 then in a used way. How well usable it is? Well, a lot of space for both vehicles. The X5 a little bit larger as for the trunk area. 
driving wise so much fun with both vehicles performance wise and how extreme it is the ix is even a little bit better especially because you have this electric punch from the low speed areas the more natural driving experience definitely with the combustion engine it will be the same with the six in or here with the v8 so you just have a little bit more feeling for the car with the combustion engine a little bit more emotional and you know maybe also vibration wise just a gut feeling that i feel a little bit more connected when i have the x5 with the six cylinder or with the eight cylinder i would always go for the six cylinder is way more fuel saving indeed and just fits to the vehicle a little bit better adaptive suspension or air suspension both do a great job you can also stick with the normal adaptive suspension by bmw that also counts for both vehicles actually so both great in comfort and agility at the same time yeah but then the question also petrol versus electric um, you know going for the electric vehicle makes sense in a way of helping you know that we do the shift away from petroleum use on long term that definitely makes sense to me the key is do you already have the charging infrastructure at home or and or at work then the ix definitely makes sense and of course from a sustainability aspect when it also comes from renewable energy this you know this energy if you cannot charge at home then of course it still makes sense in a way to go for the combustion engine and just from an emotional aspect from the gut feeling I would still end up with the X5 then as the 40i six cylinder if I take more the sustainability and moving away from petroleum mindset then of course I would more go to the iX but I would really do that when I have the possibility to charge at home so these are my two cents for today would like to hear your opinion now what is your take petrol electric x5 or ix or are you really undecided looking forward to your comments and also tune in to more episodes of the ix and the x5 in different versions